Is it recording? Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Big Dog here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the E-Ride Pro Professional Super Sport 2.0, as uh, most people call this bike the E-Ride Pro SS. I've ridden it about 200 and some odd miles, and I feel it's time that I share with you my experience with it in an attempt to get you to use my link so I can get money to put into my pocket. Oh, oh I mean, we'll just cut that out, all right? So we'll start off here with all the specs and features of this beautiful electric dirt bike. So this is a 19 inch tire, it's staggered. The front's got a 70 by 100 and the rear has got a wider 80 by 100 tire. Full twist throttle, four piston hydraulic brakes front and rear with 220 millimeter brake rotors. So far, I feel abs the brakes on this bike are absolutely great. Uh, I emailed E-Ride to ask them about the suspension specs and they said it's 220 millimeters. They didn't specify front and rear, so it has 220 millimeters total. Now, it's, I'm guessing it has 220 millimeters front and rear. There's this nice coil shock in the back. Both of these are uh, full adjustability. So for the rear coil shock, you you can adjust the coil by compressing it or decompressing it. It's got compression here at the top and it's got rebound here at the bottom. The motor here is listed at 5,000 watts, but it puts out a massive 12,000 watts peak. And that is supplied by this controller here. This controller is a 72 volt, 150 amp controller. So that is very impressive. That is a lot of power. Front is an inverted shock. And uh, you're asking me, what's an inverted shock? It means it's not verted. It's the opposite of verted. So any further questions on that, just uh, feel free to put them in the comments. Has full adjustability on the front as well. Preload here on the left. It has your compression on the right. And the rebound adjustment is here at the bottom. Here's one thing I found that I'm not too fond of. So the battery cavity here, here's where the battery goes. And there's a couple of connections you need to plug into the battery once it's in here. But if you've noticed here, there's another little wire here. I've kind of tucked it away, but I noticed it was rubbing. You can see it's rubbed through the sheet here, the protection on the wire a little bit. And another thing I've noticed when you pull out the battery, it almost always will hit this little switch here. And then when you go to put down the battery lid, it no longer fits and you have to bend it back and then it fits. So here's the key. The key is, will allow you to open and shut the battery compartment as well as the ignition here. So here you have your controls. You have your regen settings here, one and two. I honestly couldn't tell you which one is more or less aggressive because uh, they both kind of feel the same to me. You have your horn, your turbo mode, and turbo mode on this bike puts a nice logo on the screen that says turbo, but I don't, I don't think it does anything else besides that. But it's cool if you want to say, say turbo, press that button. And you have your sport and eco mode selector here. Sport mode gives it all the power. Eco mode uh, limits you to 28 miles per hour, which is actually pretty nice if you're just cruising around town. This bike has a massive 72 volt, 40 amp hour battery, which works out to be about 2,800 watt hours, which is really big. And one thing I really like about this bike is it comes with a 10 amp charger. So I'm coming from an e-bike background where most chargers are two to three amps. This battery is 40 amp hours and it'll charge in four hours, which is awesome. So a lot of these e-bike batteries take seven hours to charge. This will charge from zero to full in four hours. And they state it'll charge from 20 to 90% in two hours. You can see here the headlight on this bike is actually very bright. You can uh, adequately ride this around at night, although I don't like riding at night. Chain drive. But there's also a belt drive on the other side, if you can see through there. They do that because it's quieter and they need to reduce the gears from the motor to the, to the chain eventually. But you can also swap that out to a chain drive on that side as well, but it makes it significantly louder. And it has this USB-C charger here and a USB 3.0 port, which is actually really nice. So when you're riding your bike, you can charge your electronic devices really fast. A lot of these e-bikes over here will have USB ports, but they're 1.0, they're super slow. So this is actually a very usable USB setup here. The total of this white bike weighs 139 pounds. Now you can see right now the battery is outside of it charging. And one thing I really like about that is when the battery's out of it, this bike is fairly easy to move. I don't know exactly how much it weighs. I'd guess right about 100 pounds, but I have no problem. Well, I mean, it's not easy, but I, move this bike up and down my stairs to my apartment. So 
it's actually fairly easy to maneuver this bike with no battery in it. There's your plastic fender here in the front. A little plastic fender in the rear here as well. And you can see here is the linkage for the rear shock. Now, some people have noted that the suspension on the 2.0 feels stiffer than the original version. I haven't ridden the original, but I can kind of agree with that. Suspension on this bike is not super soft, but uh, it doesn't leave me wanting to upgrade it. The E-Ride rates this bike as a top speed of 60. I've gotten the speedometer up to 60 a few times, but we'll be checking the actual top speed with the Draggy today. You get this all plugged in, then you go ahead and flip the breaker switch right down in there. And this is what I mentioned earlier. So when you pull the battery out, it hits this thing here. So in order to turn on the bike, you want to put the key in the ignition here and then flip it all the way to the on position. And that's going to turn on the display here. Now the display here is pretty basic, but I like it. it. Has your speedometer in the middle, has your battery power, has sport or eco mode as noted here. It has your odometer and the tripometer, which resets every time you turn off the bike. And as a before, there's a horn on this bike as well. Pretty loud horn. I would kind of like if it had a wattage output meter here just to see how much wattage this thing is actively outputting. So now that we've gone over all those boring specs and features, what do you say we do the fun part and take this bad boy out for a ride? Come on guys, let's get going. All right guys, we're out on the E-Ride Pro and the first thing I'm gonna do here is check the top speed. So I got my draggy set up and uh, we're just gonna get going. Showing uh, 50 on the speedometer, 50 on the draggy now, 53. We are going directly into the wind right now, by the way. 56, 55, 54 on the draggy. And it uh, looks like we're kind of stalling out there because we're going right into the wind. So let's go ahead and turn around and try it the other direction. Okay. So we're 50 on the Speedo, 52 on the Draggy, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. So we're 60 on the Speedometer, so it doesn't feel like it's really accelerating anymore. So I got 59 on the Draggy, so, you know, average the two of them out. I've been able to hit 60 a few times on this bike, at least according to the Speedometer. So yeah, this bike is uh, pretty quick, guys, and honestly, um, for a stock bike, I feel like this bike is just plenty fast enough. I don't find myself at this point really wanting to make it any faster. Uh, zero to 30 in 2.6 seconds, and that's really where you're gonna want the power on these things. It's not, not really a high speed bike, if you ask me. I feel like the vast majority of people buying these bikes are really, to be honest, are gonna be riding them on the street anyway. So I just wanna demonstrate these bikes are great for a, a lot of terrain. I got this bike, I live in the city, so I wasn't really buying it with uh, off-road expectations in mind. This fairly bumpy road, we're going over at 30, you know, 40, no problem. You wanna say that the acceleration on this bike is just really impressive. You know, I'm not a wheelie guy, so I have to be careful how much throttle I give it because it'll pull the front wheel extremely easy. And another thing I have to say is the throttle mapping on this bike is just awesome. You know, like the more you pull this throttle, the more power it gives you. It's like instant, super responsive. Uh, you can hear that. It's just immediate response to the throttle. I love the throttle mapping on this. But you know, I think a lot of people interested in these bikes are thinking wheelies and that uh that lifestyle but for me i just wanted a dirt bike you know i come from the e-bike side of things so i'm not a crazy willy stunt guy or anything i might do some jumps at some point but nothing crazy i just wanted a fun dirt bike i mean who doesn't want a dirt bike so i read into these things quite a bit and then this one is available i picked this up at rev rides in person and uh the first one i got unfortunately the controller was dead on it and they told me this, and that was the first one they had an issue with. I actually get, a, I got that bike, entire bike replaced through Rev Rides. This is an entirely different bike, and I have uh, 238 miles on it, and I've had no issues whatsoever on it. Yeah, so these bikes are just really great. This has a 72 volt 
40 amp hour battery, 2,880 watt hours of capacity. Uh, I did a range test earlier today. I got 39 miles, which to me exceeds my expectations. You can take this bike camping or you can use this for an exploration bike, assuming you're not gonna go a huge amount of miles. But for what I want this for, this bike checks all the boxes for me. And I like that it's uh, 139 pounds without the battery, so I can just pick this thing up and put it into my truck, which I've done a few times now. Whereas, uh, you know, you get a full-size dirt bike, you're not gonna be able to do that, not with the motor and everything, the gas tank, it's just gonna be too heavy. But I live in the city, and I've ridden this round, you know, it's gonna be a case-by-case -case basis. Really is gonna depend on where you live. Uh, the city I live, if you guys have watched my videos, I've told you before, they have uh, way bigger problems than uh, people riding their e-bikes around. So I feel like as long as you're not being a complete moron on your bike and uh, riding around through traffic and doing wheelies through stop signs, you're probably gonna be fine depending on, you know, where you live. 57. This bike feels really stable too. And I feel like for the size of this bike, it doesn't need to go 80 miles an hour. This is just my, I have e-bikes that are bigger than this bike. The one thing I have found that I'm not too big of on this bike is the saddle can be a bit uncomfortable after riding for a while. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of this saddle. Now, I really like the brakes. But let me tell you something, um, I don't want to cram them too hard because I honestly feel like you could probably go over the bars. The tires that come on this are not optimized for the street, obviously. These are off-road tires, so I feel like the brakes on this thing are absolutely awesome. I feel, uh, I've heard people talk about upgrading them. From the riding I've done on this bike, I feel absolutely no inclination whatsoever towards upgrading these brakes. Let's go back off-road here. The charger, I love that you can charge this thing so fast, you know, 20 to 90% in two hours, that's pretty good. So you can ride this thing around, get quite a bit of riding time and put it back on the charger and then be back on the bike within a couple of hours with a significant amount of range recuperated. Uh, I have to say this bike was a bit noisier than I was expecting. The chain drive on this bike, the chain makes noise. I mean, I've heard somebody say it sounds like a chainsaw. I guess I just never realized that chains make that much noise. I guess on a dirt bike, the exhaust is louder than the chain, so you don't hear it. So, but on this bike, you hear the chain and a hum from the motor. But other than that, this is pretty quiet. And I did notice some kids riding by on their e-motos and you can barely hear them. But while you're on the bike, you hear the chain. Another thing I want to point out here is we do a bit of climbing is uh, while sport mode lets you go full speed, obviously, and it gives you more power, uh, eco mode on this limits you at 28 miles an hour, but so far, I haven't found a hill that I can't climb in eco mode. Eco mode still has plenty of power to get you up pretty much whatever obstacle you want. I feel like if you wanted to just play it safe and ride trails like this or do some climbing, you could just pop it in eco mode and not really worry about flipping the bike over quite so easy, but I'm sure you could still flip the bike in eco if you wanted to. And for reference guys, I'm six foot two. This is what a six foot two rider looks like getting on and off the bike. No problem at all for me, but I think uh, if you're shorter, if you're five five or so, you might have some issues. With I've adjusted the suspension on here so you can see quite a bit of travel front and rear. You got my compression and rebound and everything set in the way I like it. So it gives a pretty nice ride all around. I really really like the way this rides and here's what we look like riding around on the e-ride pro now obviously i'm not going to go too fast because uh, i need both hands on the handlebars but wanted to give you an idea of what you look like on this bike pretty cool huh check it out This also has regenerative braking here, so you can change it between level one and level two or off. And uh, honestly, I can't tell you much of a difference between the two. It's more for slowing you down on descent and stuff, not as much for getting, you know, battery charge back in your battery, especially, you know, if you're just going down these longer downhills and you wanna just let the bike slow itself down, you can pop it down into the regenerative braking mode here. I'll give you a taste of this horn outside pretty loud 
So this has a turbo button here as well. And from what I was told originally is that if you wanted to get this bike to its top speed, you had to press turbo. But uh, honestly, from what everything I've read and since riding this bike itself, it feels like the turbo button does absolutely nothing. And now all the power is baked into the sport mode. So you get all 12,000 watts in sport mode. If you do press the turbo button, it does say turbo on the display. Uh, like right now, you can see it says turbo now, but the bike feels exactly the same. I've gotten 60 miles an hour multiple times in sport mode, so uh, turbo was kind of a relic of the past on this bike. Let's see how fast we get going this way. 60. We are going with the wind, guys, but... I think this bike is speed limited at 60 because it's not wanting to accelerate and I don't feel much drag. But look at that, we're just flying down the road at 60. Yeah, this bike, this bike hauls ass. There's uh, probably more elegant ways to say that, but uh, yeah, this bike hauls ass. So I got 40 miles, about just about 40 miles on this bike earlier today. That was about 70% sport mode riding. The way I'm riding right now, I probably wouldn't get that much because I've uh, done a few top speed runs now. I'm at 13 miles, 66% battery, and uh, yeah, I'm not being conservative at all with it. The power level stayed pretty well, good on this bike until it got to like 30 to 40%, and then it started to become pretty noticeable that uh, the power was lacking. The last 10% was, uh, it was kind of a grind. It wasn't very fun, to be honest. Man, this bike is just so fun, guys. My area, I kind of have to, you know, keep my eyes peeled and riding out on the street. But out here, yeah, you can just do whatever you want. I'd have a thousand miles on this bike in a month if I lived out here. I want to give a different perspective on these types of bikes, because I know I'm an older guy, I'm 44. So I was curious about these bikes. I wasn't going to be like the typical person who buys a Suron, you know. But that doesn't mean these bikes don't work for us as well. So take it from me, a 44-year-old guy, especially I've never owned a dirt bike before. Uh, I don't regret buying this at all. The sticker price did sting quite a bit when I first bought it, but uh, that wore off after about a week or two, and uh, I have no regrets at all. It's just so fun. This bike is awesome. I love uh, exploring, so, you know, that's my main thing. It's fast. That's great. I like to rip around and have fun with the speed, but I really like just being able to explore and do stuff like this. These bikes have a lot of purposes, not just uh, doing wheelies. But yeah, I do notice this seat likes to cut off my circulation after a bit. I need to move around and get the, get the blood going again. Isn't this cool? We're just riding around through the middle of a field. Look at that. How cool is this, guys? So there you guys have it. This is the E-Ride Pro SS 2.0. I absolutely recommend this bike. This bike is absolutely awesome. As of now, this is probably my favorite bike to ride. I do still enjoy pedaling when I want to get exercise, but if I'm just going to go out and look for some thrills and I want to zoom around, this is the bike I pick. So yeah, price is $48.99 as of now. Uh, I think it's worth it, as far, especially as far as these goes. If you want to compare this to a intro level like Santa Cruz or Turbo Levo, they're actually around the same price. And with this bike, you're gonna get more than twice as much. You're getting a gigantic 72 volt, 40 amp hour battery, a motor that can put out 12,000 watts, a bike that can do 60 miles an hour. So how these bikes are the same price actually doesn't make much sense to me. But anyways, guys, yeah, absolutely. If you're looking to buy one of these things, do whatever it's gonna to take to get it done, guys. Take a loan out, put yourself in debt. I mean, maybe even borrow some money from the wrong people, if you know what I mean. Just do whatever it takes to get yourself one of these bikes and make sure you use the, the link in the description of this video when you do it, just to help support my channel. No, I'm kidding though. But if you are interested in buying one of these, use the link in the description of this video. It does help support the channel and I guarantee you'll have a lot of fun. But be safe out there, get the right protective gear, guys, because you can get yourself hurt on these bad boys. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.